What's up guys, Thin and Dirt Lifestyle. I'm gonna do everything I can to finish this rear tire carrier. In the last episode, we designed and built the tire carrier and then mounted it to the bumper. After a long week of filming, it was clear that I had a lot more work to do, and so we had to make a third part to this series. I've given a lot of thought since the last video on how to proceed in this video, and I spent the last couple videos basically just taking ideas from my head and from the paper that I drew out and just trying to make it exist in real life. And once I was able to kind of prove the concept and, and see a good path forward, now we can step back and we can solidify these ideas and make sure that we're building a really strong 4x4 bumper and a really strong 4x4 tire carrier. So I think the best way to start is gonna be by shoring up this foundation. We have aluminum corners on this Land Rover. A lot of people don't know that these are aluminum, but because this is aluminum, it makes it to where this is something we need to protect uh, in a big way. Repairing aluminum sucks and it's so easy to damage and ding off-road. So we're gonna build a really nice, I've got some ideas for something that is a little bit radical, but I think it's gonna work out really nice. A nice set of corner protection on the bottom side here, and that's gonna double as an extra leverage point to keep this entire system from sagging whenever we open up the carrier itself. So right now we have six bolts, three mounting points that are keeping the bumper in place, and they work really good for that. If we were to pull somebody out of a mud hole, this bumper's not going anywhere. It's definitely staying on there. But because we have all the extra leverage of this tire up here, it makes it to where we're gonna have a lot of wiggle in the bumper unless we move our mounting, or unless we expand our mounting points and move one in front of these. So I'm gonna shoot for about a foot. If I can get about a foot more leverage in front of these mounting points we have now, and then add two more mounting points a foot in front of these, I think that it's gonna really help shore up the bumper and help keep the deflection to a minimum with this tire carrier. No matter what, we're gonna have wiggle. No matter what, we're gonna have a little bit of sag whenever we open it. But this video is gonna be about trying to solidify the relationship between all these parts, making it to where we can reduce that sag, reduce that wiggle as much as possible. I'm gonna start by pulling some basic measurements, cutting out some square tube, and putting everything in a way that makes sense and covers some of the damaged body panels that are on this Discovery. I'm gonna incrementally cut away some different parts of the body that I know I wanna cover up with either armor or with the bumper, I haven't decided yet. But either way, I'm gonna slowly inch my way up these body panels and trim away stuff that I know I don't need that's gonna get in the way. a plan for this and I was trying to decide how much time this video should take, I decided that it would be smart to exploit as many factory body bolts or even holes in the frame that I could. I also found some scrap square tubing in the shop that already had holes drilled in it for another project and this seemed to fit perfect for what we're doing today. The process of creating modular parts and components is very time consuming. There's a lot of fitment, tack, finish weld, fitment, tack, finish weld, and you just do this process over and over and over to make sure that whenever you go to bolt this part on to the vehicle, you don't have a bunch of holes that aren't matching up because you had a bunch of warpage or you simply made a mistake by trying to move through the process too fast. This project is humming right along. This is a solid mounting point. 
can put a lot of pressure on it and it doesn't seem to want to budge and we're going to make it even more solid. But so far, I just sent two bolts through the frame right there. One was existing. This one down here was for the factory tow package. This was just a hole in the frame. So I put a 3 16 bolt in it and sent that all the way through. And then I added a gusset up here on that corner. And that really helped make this super, super rigid. So I wanted this piece right here to be able to unbolt um, to make it easier to pull the bumper on and off. So all I have to do is unbolt this section here. It's four bolts. And then the same thing on the other side and then it'll be easier to pull the bumper off and not have to deal with all that extra shenanigans down there. Plus, if I ever needed to change it, it would be super easy. Um, you know, I don't see a reason why I would change it, but if I had to, all I'd have to do is bolt, unbolt that section and I don't have to pull everything off. So the next step is gonna be making this even more rigid, which is, it's already pretty stout, but we're gonna be taking impacts like this and it's gonna put a lot of stress on this section right here. And this is where it gets kind of thin. So I wanna make sure that we make this really strong. It just so happens that there's a nice little body line right here on the tub. So we're going to take a piece of 3 16 we're gonna bend it around the tub here, and that's gonna help. By making this taller, it's gonna give us um, more resistance to this bending whenever we take an impact right here. We're also gonna add a bunch more stuff to here. So unfortunately, we're adding a bunch of weight with some of this stuff, but it's gonna be very worth it to make sure that uh, this is impact resistant. I want to try to make this next piece without any seams, meaning that I want to try to accomplish all of our changes of direction with bends. This is going to be a lot of bends in a short piece, and it's going to be a little bit complicated. So I'm actually going to break out an angle finder, something that I don't use very often. The trick to a series of bends like this is keeping everything squared up with the machine, making sure that the radiuses are somewhat close to the vehicle you're working on, and just trying to keep it all square. Building corner armor is something that I wanted to do long term, but didn't think I was gonna have to do it so soon. It makes a lot of sense to make sure that the marriage between the body and the bumper looks right, and this is a really good opportunity to build some custom corner armor and put a nice little bend to give us a really good clean reveal. I chose eighth inch aluminum plate for this project because it's rigid enough to help resist an impact from destroying this corner, but it's also malleable enough that I can put a small bend with enough work to meet the angle and the roll on the bottom side of this body. I've got some design ideas for a tool that I'm gonna build in the future that's gonna help me with this task. So I'm just gonna make do with what I have and try to come up with something creative to put a little bit of a shape into the bottom of this corner armor. To secure our newly designed corner armor, I'm just gonna mount it to the body with some rib nuts. Very simple, very fast, very clean. This corner armor we just built is a great example of something that you just don't plan for, but it just makes sense to take care of it now. This is this side had damage from a previous accident, and I've wanted to cover it for a long time. And because there was no clean way of making this world here meet up with that world there, I think that this was the perfect opportunity to just throw a chunk of corner armor on it. And then since we put that 90 degree bend, it kind of gives it a nice seam on the bottom and you know none of this is perfect work but i think that for this vehicle a lot of this stuff is kind of sprucing it up making it look nice the next thing that i want to work on is finishing up the reveal on the bottom of this bumper so if you watch the first video in this series i put a chunk of one inch by i think that's inch and a quarter uh, and i put it at 45 so we have 45 degree termination on the bottom of the bumper we're going to carry this all the way around i'm going to cut this at an angle to give it a tapered look and then once we get all that welded i mean this is going to be ready to rock i just need to start working on our tire carrier I've got some real big challenges ahead of me with shoring up this tire carrier portion here. I don't want to add a whole bunch of more weight to the spindle. The spindle's beefy for sure, 
but the more weight, the more stress and strain we put on it, the shorter life we can expect out of it. And I think that right now we're doing pretty good on weight. There is a little bit of extra leverage because of how tall the tire is, but I, I'm very confident that we're not gonna have an issue with this on the trail. So what I wanna do is make sure that we don't have an issue where the round tube butts up to this rectangular tube. And right now it's just a butt weld. So what we need to do is we need to increase the surface area of weld, I guess. And we're gonna do that with gusseting. So I wanna use these gussets. We're just gonna put them at a slight angle. Um, these gussets are great because the, it, since the center has been knocked out, it makes it to where they're even lighter. So this, we're not adding a bunch more weight to the spindle, but we're gonna add some strength to the relationship between these two tubes. Then I'm gonna put a center plate in here. I'm gonna build it out of some eighth inch steel. We're gonna pop some holes in it. We're gonna do some dimple dies. We're gonna put a little 90 degree kink on top. And that's gonna add a little bit more strength, a little bit more surface area, but mostly it's just gonna add looks and it's not gonna cost us a whole bunch of weight. I bet you the plate itself will be like a pound whenever we're all done, once we cut all the material away and uh, we bend it in the way we want it. Right after that, we are gonna make a lock that's gonna lock this open. So while I'm using the table and whatnot and I'm off road, if the wind starts to blow a little bit, it doesn't make it to where this thing wants to shut on me. Also, just being on a slight hill could make this one a swing. These are bearings for crying out loud. So we need to make some sort of a lock, but first I wanna knock out these gussets. Change of plans, this looks like crap. I really don't like the design that I came out with. So this is gonna cost us a bunch of time, but I'm gonna redo this plate. I like the second version of this beauty plate that I came up with a lot better. It's a lot less holes, it's a lot more simple, and it doesn't just try to grab you to look at it whenever you're looking at the bumper. It blends in with the characteristics and styling of the rest of this bumper and tire carrier instead of just screaming out for your attention. At the end of the day, beauty is definitely in the eye of the beholder, and this beholder did not like the first version. I decided to remake it, and I'm much happier with the second version I came up with. A little bit of half inch steel and a little bit of elbow grease is all I needed in order to get a really solid mounting point for this locking pin. This has turned into the never ending tire carrier build series. I don't know how many more parts we're gonna have. I imagine only one more, but I feel like I keep saying this over and over. Either way, I'm very happy with the way everything's turning out. It's definitely, it's a lot of little puzzle pieces that need to intricately fit, fit together. And that's what's taking so long in this series is you know, I don't have like a bunch of other people who have done a build like this. If I had a JK, I mean, there's a plethora of examples you can look at, but it's kind of a one of a kind thing I'm trying to do here. So. Bear with me as we work our way through all these little, uh, these little tasks and try to make something one of a kind. Either way, I think that it's functional. I think that it's practical. Uh, this lock mechanism seems to be working fairly well. It's just tack welded, so I can't really reef on it too hard, but it's all working. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing so far. In the next video, we are gonna have a whole bunch more stuff to tackle. There's no way I could get this done before Sunday. So all day tomorrow, which is Saturday, I'm gonna be editing this whole video from the whole last week of filming and everything. And uh, yeah, there's just no way I could get everything done tonight because I've got to add a whole bunch of 
little details that I think are gonna make this really cool. And then we've gotta build that table. And then I've got to finish weld all of it, which is probably a day in itself and smooth everything out, paint it all and then reinstall it all. So there's just not enough time left in the week. But either way, I hope you guys enjoy this video and look forward to the next one. I hope we are gonna put a bow on this thing in the next one and wrap it all up. One more thing before we go. I welded in a way that is not recommended. Um, I just messed up. I, I, I kept my ground here on the bumper and I welded through these bearings and uh, onto the carrier. Don't ever do that. It was just a mistake. I can't believe that I overlooked it, but sometimes between the camera work and trying to you know, think about your next step, you just overlook small details. So for those of you who are new, don't do that. Try to keep your ground as close to where you're working as possible. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now I'm gonna take a couple minutes, we're gonna answer a few of the questions and the comments from the last video. The last video was just the second part of the series, this is the third part, and then it looks like there's gonna be a fourth part. So the first question comes from Wayne B. Nate, will you be doing a rear camera and screen to replace your rear view mirror? Thought you would have left the tire carrier base bar longer to maximize uh, what you would mount it on. All the best, bro. So I am definitely gonna be doing a rear camera because of two reasons. That tire's huge, but the inside storage system that I built completely makes it to where you can't see um, out of the back. But to be completely honest, I use side mirrors more than anything because I have a complete career behind me of driving box trucks for years. And box trucks are designed where there is no rear view mirror on the windshield. So I'm very accustomed to that, but I think a rear view camera would be really nice to have. Next question comes from Matt Hamilton. Your work is honestly amazing and inspiring. Thank you so much. A lot of you guys give giant compliments like that and I really, really appreciate such a positive comment. You have given me so many great ideas, no problem. Do you have a list of materials used for this project? Material thicknesses, where you got the hardware for the clasps, etc. So, I have some somewhat exciting news but this is gonna be a slow developing thing. I bought some software to start blueprinting the stuff that I build because I have so many people over the last year and a half of me having this channel that have asked me to buy plans for the different bumpers or roof racks or whatever. So as I learn this software, I'm gonna start slowly blueprinting a bunch of the stuff that I have built uh, for the different vehicles in the shop and then those will go up for sale eventually. Um, I'm gonna keep them cheap, I'm gonna keep them affordable, but I want to make digital assets that will make it easy for you guys to see the exact material thicknesses that I used for everything. And uh, it'll have angles and dimensions and all that stuff. So definitely look forward to that in the future. The next comment is from Casey Cryan. Seems like if you need max tracks, it will be a pain in the ass because you have to unlatch the rear bumper to swing it out of the way. So I don't know where to start with these. I get so many of these and this one was funny enough that I thought I'd bring it up. So not trying to pick on you, brother, but you are clearly looking for something to be wrong with this. And you are clearly just making a comment that is passive aggressive. I get loads of passive aggressive comments. I'm not gonna delete your passive aggressive comment. I'm gonna let you wear that. <laughs> but I would not define a pain in the ass as having a latch that you undo without tools and then grab the max tracks. So if you don't like the extra step of uh, having to unlatch something and you think that that's a giant pain in the ass, I, I would highly recommend that you build yours differently. However, I think that you're just looking for something to be wrong here. And uh, either way, I appreciate the comment. I appreciate you watching. And I hope that you decide that um, the next comment will be looking for something positive to grab in the video and comment on that. Last question is from Thomas Underwood. Good, look, good looking work, Nate. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a plan to reinforce the connection of the tire riser hoop to the swing arm? Looks like the tire weight could present significant leverage on the belt butt welds. I think that we made a short, a small attempt to remedy that situation in this video, because I completely agree. I think that there's a lot of leverage from that tire on those butt welds. Um, as I built those plates, I came up with some other ideas that we might uh, we might work towards in the next video. Right now, I think that we're moving in the right direction, but I'm not completely satisfied with the way that that is gusseted. So I'm gonna stew on this. I've got some different ideas that we might explore in the next one, but I completely agree with you, man. I mean, that is very constructive criticism in my opinion. I think that there's a lot of force in those butt welds and I need to figure out 
a clever, light way to shore it up and keep it from flexing too much and uh, breaking around those welds. For those of you who enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you wanna help support the channel, you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, neck gaiters, all kinds of stuff. My wife is constantly making decals. In fact, one of the experimental decals uh, made a guest appearance in this video and I ended up covering it up with armor. Uh, it's like that topographical DL logo. I think that it's really cool. So I'll be moving those up. Uh, I just need to have her print me more. But anyway, she's making all kinds of cool stuff like that. And if you want to help support us through Patreon, we have a link to that from our website as well. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at your lifestyle, Nate. We'll see you next time. What? 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 What?